The Secaucus Fire Department has a new rescue fireboat made by Wisconsin-based Lake Assault Boats. The marine vessel replaces a 1988 boat and brings the Hudson County town and the region a major upgrade that modernizes, expands, and diversifies response capability. After trying for three years, the delivery was made possible by a $346,410 Federal Emergency Management Agency Port Security Grant. The town of Secaucus contributed $115,740. At a press conference, Congressman Bill Pasquale and local officials outlined the importance of regional safety. We're home right now to uh, container terminals, uh, marine oil transfer facilities, chemical plants, and one of the nation's biggest transportation hubs is right here. This is the nexus of $187 billion in annual trade. The Port Authority, uh, the Port of New Jersey and New York, it's a linchpin for this economy. In fact, 20% of the gross domestic product is in our metropolitan area. 20% of the entire nation's GDP. The boat will provide emergency response for the following. This is the important part. Marine fires, shoreline fires, toxic spills, marine rescue services, and many other first responder needs across the New Jersey coastline. According to Pasquale, Secaucus serves as first responder to 15 bridges along the Passaic River and 14 bridges along the Hackensack River, including the portal bridge that supports New Jersey Transit and Amtrak. Secaucus's fire department was expected to help watch over our ports, but they didn't have the resources. It's as simple as that. In fact, before today, Carney as the only boat north of Newark. Officials emphasize the importance of cooperation and mutual aid in the densely populated area of North Hudson County. Sea Caucus is also part of the New York, New Jersey Regional Fireboat Task Force. So we cover from the Hackensack River through Newark Bay, as the Congressman said, and we have the potential of being called out to the Hudson River uh, in the event of a large-scale incident. The fire chief provided Darius News with a tour of the boat that includes a pressurized cabin, chemical weapon detection, radiological detection, can operate in 28 to 32 inches of water compared to the old boat that required at least five feet and can transport an ATV. So this is the 500 gallon, gallon per minute task force tip nozzle. In the center of the deck is the 1500 GPM monitor, which also has triple two and a half inch uh, connections as well as a five inch discharge. In the bow, the bow drops down, so we could actually put an ATV in the front of the boat. We could load, peop load people in front of the boat. To the left is, on the port side, is a side dive door that holds 350 pounds. And the davit crane uh, can hold a max of 900 pounds, depending on the setting. Well, can you give an example of what you would use that crane for? Uh, sure, if we have someone that needs to be rescued out of the water or a boat that we need to maneuver, possibly a kayak to get into the front of the boat, um, a diver we can lift out and put into the boat. This is uh, Captain Mar Mark Masarelli, this is Deputy Chief Joe Schoendorf, and Battalion Chief Freddie Schneider. And you all go out together, or you're part of the team that goes out? We're, we're, we're part of the Marine Division, correct. In the back is the uh, twin 350 Mercury engines, and that rail holds the Stokes basket, floating Stokes basket. So in the event there's a victim in the water, we can put the victim into the Stokes basket and we can use the davit crane to lift them into the boat to rescue them. Yeah, how much faster can you go than the, old, than, the, than the older boat? So the old boat did approximately 15 miles an hour. This boat does in excess of 50 miles an hour. These are two monitors. They monitor the depth of the water, fuel gauges, uh, side scan sonar, FLIR camera. Um, it's basically a map of the river or part of the water that we're in, tell us the depth. Um, we can mark it so that there's any structures underneath. We can mark them, we can go back to them. This obviously is the steering wheel, both engines. This is the fire pump control. These two controls here are the front, the uh, roof mounted flood cam flood floodlights. We have air condition, 
Um, UHF radio, VHF radio, marine band radio, and the lights and sirens. Now something as simple as, did the old boat have air conditioning? Uh, it did not. So people may say that's a nicety, but the heat wears you. Yes. How, does, have you already noticed that makes a difference in making you more effective and concentration and everything? Yes, th this cabin stays cool with this air conditioning unit. Uh, we've had between five and seven guys in here and you know we haven't had any issues. So it's not really a luxury? No. No, it's when you're out on the boat, you have to prepare yourself for being out there for a long duration of time because we don't know what the response is going to be. Right, because you could have a big incident at the end of your shift and have to stay, right? Right, we could stay anywhere from 10 minutes to 10 hours. Okay. Uh, can you tell me about what has been, um, just a little bit, how long have you been doing this before you got this boat and what's the learning curve on this one? Uh, I've been a fireman for 22 years. Um, I've always been involved with boats my entire life, and the Marine Division, probably about 10 years, um, you know, we started really getting involved with, with the boats because we're right on the river and the river is used by citizens every day. We're still learning. Uh, obviously, you know, there's a lot of variables. You have wind, tide, current, uh, that all comes into effect when you're navigating a boat. Um, this boat is definitely easier to operate than the prior boat. Um, it reacts a lot faster, the engines are, are quicker. You could actually offset the engines, one forward, one reverse, and do a total 360 with the boat. Is it also kind of fun? It is fun, yes. <laughs> it is fun. When we built this boat, the, we flew out there to do a pre-paint uh, pre inspection before they painted it to see if there was any changes that we wanted to make before it was delivered. Um, upon delivery, the owner himself uh, flew here met with us, trained us for three days. Um, so those in individuals that were just here and another firefighter um, were trained for, for three days uh, and we're training the rest of the members. So you could say this is a custom built boat for this area? Yes, yes, it's a truly custom built boat. Lake Assault builds a, a custom boat um, for the individual or, or municipality. Okay. Do, do these pumps go farther and stronger than the old one? Yes, the yeah, the, the other boat um, maybe went 25 to 50 feet. This does in excess of uh, 200 feet. Um, it's a 1500 GPM uh, fire pump, so it has a lot of power and uh, we can reach great distances with it. And along with the uh, starboard side 500 gallon per minute mo monitor. With a fire comes heat. So the further we can be away and still actively put out the fire, uh, the better it is for us, the safer it is for us, and the better it is for the boat. Um, this boat has a between 28 and 32 inch draft, which means we can operate within 28 and 32 inches of water uh, to, to flow, flow water. So we you know, have the potential of servicing a land-based operation. So if there's a, whether it's our town or a neighboring municipality that has a building or structures on the river and they don't have good hydrants, we could actually support land-based operations. Uh, this pump can supply five inch hose to land to a fire apparatus that could then pump to a fire scene. Under the deck, there's a intake, the engine, the fire pump engine is under the rear deck. Uh, it gets sucked up and discharged out the front monitors. According to Chief Leppin, the fire boat was delivered last month. Although it has not yet been used in a fire, the crew is trained, and if the call comes, the boat is ready to use. Reporting from the Hackensack River shoreline in Secaucus, Caesar Darius.